So first thing to get out of the way here, when we're looking at annuities in this context, we're not talking about the kind where, well... I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Okay, she went worth 877 cash now. Instead, we're looking at things more like retirement accounts, things where you are going to be investing amounts into it, presumably every year, and that's the name annuity happens annually, where the amount in the account can be thought of if you just make a single investment in terms of a principal, P, that's your initial investment, multiplied by 1 plus R, where R is the interest rate raised to the power T. That is, the amount in the account, if you just make one initial investment, will follow a geometric sequence, where A1 is that investment, this 1 plus R, that's our ratio, and T is the place in the sequence we're looking at, although in this case T is more of a fluid value, it's not quite as discrete as we're necessarily used to, though we're going to talk about in a discrete number of years. But if we're going to look at this in terms of an annuity instead, we're going to be investing that value P every single year. So if you want to talk about the value of our investment, instead of just saying this here, we've got our geometric sequence of values, you want to talk about a sum of geometric sequence values. Where after one year, yeah, we're just going to have that value P plus the investment we get from that value P in terms of the interest. So P times 1 plus R. And as we keep going, we're going to get even more there. As we keep investing more, going to our next couple of years, we'll then get in that P times 1 plus R squared. And then if we want to take that and talk about it in terms of a general number of years, we'll have P plus P times 1 plus R plus P times 1 plus R squared plus a whole bunch of other things all the way up to P times 1 plus R raised to the power T minus 1. We will have a sum, a very nice sum, but a sum, of terms of form that we got like in that last case. We're going to have a partial sum of a geometric sequence. So, in particular, that will be the teeth partial sum. Always a clunky thing to say, but what we can take that into account and write that as S sub T is going to be equal to A1 times 1 minus r raised to the power t over 1 minus r, where in this case we said that value a1 is p, and r in this case, it's bad notation unfortunately, r is equal to 1 plus r, sorry about that, but it does happen sometimes, but we get p times 1 minus the quantity 1 plus r raised to the power t over 1 minus 1 plus r, Simplify that down a little bit, cancel out a negative, and you'll end up getting that the total amount, which we're going to now call A, is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N, where we are using that value N to generalize that we're looking at a value that compounds not just once per year, but n times per year, raised to the power nt, the number of years times the number of compounding periods in a year, minus 1 over r over n. Not the prettiest formula in the least, but that's our formula for dealing with annuities, where in particular, as we let that value n get large, as we take more and more compounding periods, we get closer and closer to a thing called continuously compounding interest, where if we want continuously compounding interest, that takes us into the type of information that led to the discovery of the number E, Euler's number, by Daniel Bernoulli. Um, not entirely sure why they don't call it Bernoulli's number with the letter B, but you know, Euler did other important things with that number as well. Anyway, what we're going to look at here is an example for how we can use this type of thing here to discuss the values in annuities. 
So for this example, we have that at age 25 to save for retirement, you decide to deposit $25 at the end of each month into an IRA, individual retirement account, that pays 9.5% compounded monthly. How much will you have from the IRA when you retire at the age of 65? A couple of assumptions in here. For one, most of you guys are not 25. Most of you guys are not thinking about retirement accounts yet. Also, by the time you are, you'll probably want to deposit more than $25. You won't get an interest rate of that close to 10%. And, well, unfortunately, people probably aren't going to be looking at retiring at 65 anymore. But anyway, the hope with this example is that in working through this, you guys start to see the types of value that you can get from a retirement account. That is from starting a retirement account early. So in this case, thinking about what we have here, our rate R is going to be 0.095. Our number N, the amount of compounding periods in a year, is 12. T is going to be the difference between 65 and 25, or 40 years. And our principal, our initial, that we're making every month, is $25. So, if you want to get the value for A, the total amount that you'll have at that point in just that account, and usually when you get a job that has an actual salary to it, they'll have retirement accounts that you can get set up that'll go direct deposit into there as well. But if you're talking about this individual retirement account here, you would have P is 25 multiplied by the quantity 1 plus 0 0.095 divided by 12 raised to the power 12 times 25 minus 1 close that quantity, and divide it by that 9.5%, 0.095, over the number of compounding periods here, which is 12, pull all those things around there, and with even that small investment of $25 a month, in that 40-year time frame, you will end up with $30,476 in the account. Obviously not enough to retire on, but even with a small investment made regularly, it would pay off a fair amount for you. And the last thing we're going to look at here, the last thing we're going to look at for this section, is how we can use these values, how we can use these ideas, but with a hint off towards infinity, as we start talking about things called series.